Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Tomorrow? That's not a good start. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you here. What, did, what year were you born in, brother? I'm saying. <laughs> um, it's great to see so many here, and uh, I see familiar faces coming back. We have a we have a, uh, a saying here that's simple. First time you come, you're a guest. After that, now you're part of the family. So you feel feel welcome, please, to be here. Uh, I've been doing this welcome several times now, and you know I think I need to share the joy a little bit. So what I'm going to do is have everybody stand up. Just find someone to shake their hand, maybe even give them a hug, whatever you're comfortable with. Let's just say hi to someone there. Make sure everybody has been here. Everybody has gotten here. Hey, my name is Sue. Nice to meet you. I was a school teacher for 30 years, and I never remembered my students' hey, names. It'd be, it'd be hard with a bunch of them. Maybe by the end of the semester, I'd have most of them up. Then I'd get all new ones. <laughs> All right, we're all officially friends and family now, so uh, next time you see one another, hey, it's automatic. Give them a shake or a, or a hug. And um, it's just good to be here once again. I'm, I'm excited to hear what Pastor Johnny has to present tonight. Um, it's been good so far. Amen. And there's more coming, so that's why we're here. We want to learn, we want to receive what God has provided through His Word. Let's bow our heads as we begin our meeting here tonight. Our Father, thank you for bringing us here. Lord, you know our heart and we're searching, we're wanting to learn, we're wanting to receive what you have promised in your word. Amen. Father, I just pray that you will be here, that your Holy Spirit will bless this, this group tonight, and that as we listen, that we will listen attentively and understand and that we will be changed by receiving the word tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, just, uh, you know, I, I say this every time, but sometimes we may have forgotten, oh, I forgot to check in. Make sure that you've been officially registered, that you're here tonight. Why does that matter? You get a free Bible after 10 uh, times here. And if my calculations are right, this is like number nine. Okay, so I suspect somebody's fixing to get a Bible here shortly, probably several. And uh, make sure you take advantage of that. Um, I, I know that Johnny, Pastor Johnny is happy to give these away, but just between you and I, even if you don't need it, maybe you can give it to a friend or neighbor. You see what I'm saying? So I think when he says free, he means that. He wants these Bibles to be to be out there. He doesn't, it doesn't benefit him to put them in his trunk and take them with him. So let's make sure we get those after we get our 10 visits, uh, 10 uh, times here. Collect your Bible, please. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, uh, one more thing. Let me mention the Bible studies. I know that many of you are taking advantage of those, but if you haven't, go to the back corner at the end of the meetings and make sure you get a couple uh, copies of the Bible studies. Uh, I don't know about you, but, you know, I get it when I'm listening to it, but I get it more when I can actually see it. Because then it's at my own speed. Then I stop and read it, and, and hey, wait, 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 let me look that up. Yeah, sure enough, that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Remember what we said the other night? If the Bible says it, that's good enough for me. Amen. That's what we're going by. All right, at this time, uh, Mr. Bud Rader is going to bless us with a song tonight.
Johnny come on up and teach us. Thank you, Jim. Move the furniture back a little bit right now. I think I'm fixing to uh, be in a dilemma tonight. <laughs> a little, little bit of a way. I see uh, two of my brothers just kind of grinning back there. Uh, I almost feel like, I, I know how Solomon felt when uh, the two mothers brought the baby. <laughs> you know what Solomon often do for the mothers? Split the baby Split in half. The two. Well, I've got two brothers that uh, I know brought guests tonight, amen? Mm -hmm. And you know what you get if you bring guests, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, what, what, what do you get? Free concordance. A free concordance, a free concordance right? Free concordance. How do you get that concordance? Oh, I thought you had to slip me a, a 20. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to bring a guest, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to know is who brought Pastor Richie? <laughs> well, wait a minute. He, he, your brother's back there raising his hand, too. <laughs> now, I can just take this book. You don't think I can tear this book in half, do you? <laughs> but, and, and I know something, too. Uh, I've already been, I've already been uh, coaxed and coached. I know where this book is going. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what the boys well, said. So oh, they, they yeah, wanted you to have that. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. That's one of the best study tools that you can get next to the Bible. Amen? Mm -hmm. That strong, yeah. exhaustive concordance. And so uh, uh, there's still plenty of time to win one. How many of you have not received one yet? Thomas, you haven't got one yet either, have you? Okay, so you just don't, don't, never fear. I've got a few weeks left. My goal is to give, put one in everybody's hand if I can. And uh, Sister Gloria is doing the best she can to <laughs> give them out. She's single-handedly giving them out to the whole community, just about. And we're thankful for that. Now, now the boys are taking right up where she's, where she's leaving off. So we just are thanks, so appreciative of that. And uh, tonight we have a special... Message. Do you remember what that is? Anybody know? Want to help me with it a little bit? Cults. What does the Bible have to say about cults? That's a good study to do tonight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I mentioned the other evening, many of us have family members that have been uh, uh, touched by cults. And so it's a good idea to know the Bible definition of a cult. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we're going to spend a lot of time on that subject tonight. But before we go there, I need to go to the Lord and ask Him to be our teacher. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank You for Your wonderful blessing of Your Son, Jesus, and for the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I have done each time we come together, I just ask that You would move me aside and let us hear Your voice tonight. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I get to this, uh, this far along in the series, and I always like to throw this up here. Remember, Pastor, these folks did not come to hear and see you. They came to hear and see who? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. That's what we want to know. Jesus is our personal friend. It was uh, just a few years ago, police in Rancho Santa Fe, California, got an anonymous call that said you might want to check on the welfare of, of some individuals that lived on three hilltop palatial acres in Rancho Santa Fe, California. And as the police walked into this beautiful mansion, they found something that literally shocked the world. 39 bodies, all of them with the same black slacks on, Nike tennis shoes, black t-shirts, they all had buzz cut haircuts. Uh, many of them still had in their hands uh, the directions for a recipe tell, instructing them to take a concoction of phenobarbital and vodka and then drift off peacefully to sleep. And that's what they did. They had suitcases leaned up against their cots or their beds. They had uh, uh, passports in their pockets and birth certificates. And just three days prior to this, these, uh, this group had been seen in a palatial restaurant in the Rancho Santa Fe area, and then over the next three days split off into groups to commit suicide. These people were led by a self-proclaimed Messiah named Marshall Applewhite and his associate Bonnie Nettles. They had come to believe that th their salvation was in a, 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 a spaceship behind the Hale-Bopp Comet. As we study about this group of people, 
What we're going to see may surprise you. These people, many were like you and I are. They come from many walks of life. One was a teacher that was 42 years old. Another one was a postal worker, uh, 29 years old. There was another mother of five that left her family just seven months prior to this to join the Heaven's Gate cult. There was another 17-year-old grandmother in the mix, a 26-year-old animal lover. Who were these people? What caused them to do what they had done? You know, there are many people today that are searching for something. They want to be able to become part of something. They're searching for something that's going to fill the holes in their empty lives. They're gradually, they became more and more isolated, these folks, and they were indoctrinated into the mindset of a cult. Cult followers want answers. That's clear. It's a common denominator among cult followers. Many people have become disillusioned with the church today. I'm sure Pastor Richie could testify to that as well, unfortunately. It seems like the worse shape the world gets in, the more people are pulling away from God. I don't understand it, but, but anyway, many people are discarding the church and throwing it away because they, they see the church, in many cases, downplaying the Bible. Sermons have become motivational speaking sermons, maybe with one verse in it or, or two verses, but not something that they can really sink their teeth into. Many see the church lacking spirituality. Many see the church as a, as a place, and this one really hurts me, a ch they see the church failing to reveal God's love to not just their brothers and sisters in the church, but in the community itself. People so go elsewhere. Uh, a two-year period reveals that there's been a 73% increase in New Age books. Forbes magazine reported that $2 billion, that's $2 billion with a B, dollars per year are spent on AIDS to, for spiritual and physical well-being. People go to spiritualists. People go to channelers. People go to uh, aromatherapists. People look for microbiotic foods to find their, their, their inner peace. People are even going on the internet and buying things like this quantum telsa amulet. This was an ad, believe it or not, that was on AOL, a inter famous internet site. Here's what it does if you want one. It's a beta blocker, CQR, crystal quantum radio. If you want one, Get your card out, your plastic, they're only $375. What does this thing do? The quantum telsa is almost exclusively intended for connecting with higher dimensions, angelic realms, angelic entities, as well as higher intelligence, higher power, higher consciousness, higher self-perception, including UFOs. It does just about everything, doesn't it, according to this advertisement. Many people are turning to Ouija boards. This is the boys' version. Last Christmas, I don't know if you saw it on the television, they even have a, a version that's decorated in pink to, to appeal to the little girls. But a Ouija board is nothing but a tool of the devil. Let's be honest about it. It's not something that we want to look at. People are shaking rattle, rattles and, and chanting, trying to evoke spirits from the north, south, east, and west. People like colored incense to try to, 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 to discern or to describe their, their aura. In fact, it seems like new age selections appeal to just about everybody. It's like walking into an all-you-can-eat buffet. There's something in a new age format that would appear to just about appeal to just about anybody. New Agers have one thing in common. They're searching for knowledge within themselves. They believe that self-knowledge is God knowledge. Now there's nothing wrong with appreciating our God-given abilities. Amen? Amen. But when we're looking at those God-given abilities, it shouldn't point us inward to ourselves. It should point us upward to our Creator, the one who made us, our Father in Heaven. So self-knowledge uh, is not God-knowledge. We need to be pointed back to Jesus Christ. The reason cults are growing is because people are seeking. People are looking for something. You know, that's one reason why gangs do so well. People want to belong to gangs because there's something lacking in their lives. They're looking, though, in the wrong places. 
A uh, recent study said that, uh, showed that uh, in the last couple of decades, there have been between three to 5,000 new religious movements in the United States alone. 20 years ago, 2,000 of those didn't even exist. But now they're climbing at an alarming rate. Many people are, are going on detours away from traditional Christianity, and those detours are leading them right over a spiritual cliff. God wants us to be depending on Him. These precious ones in that, in, in, in that terrible suicide, the Heaven's Gate cult, it wasn't until hours later that the authorities realized they had 21 women in this group because they all had the same buzz cut haircuts. They all dressed alike. And that's what cult leaders want to do. They want to try to press us into one fault mold, and that's their mold. So how do we tell the difference between truth and error? How do, we, how do we know how to find truth? Are there clear ways in which to identify uh, false religious teachers? You remember the Westerns in the 50s and 60s? The good guys would ride up on the front of the uh, silver screen. And how would you be able to tell the good guys from the bad guys? <laughs> Very good. They all had white hats, right? Well, unfortunately, uh, when it comes to the spiritual world, it's not that easy anymore. A lot of times there's uh, people that come up with white hats on, but their hats that have been whitewashed. So we need to be able to discern true spiritual leaders from the false. The Bible clearly distinguishes between genuine and counterfeit truth. The Bible helps us distinguish between truth and error. I'm going to give you five biblical characteristics to protect us from cults tonight. They're all from the Bible. And we're going to see that much of it comes from the book of Revelation. Number one, cults have a single powerful leader who becomes the cult messiah. Marshall Applewhite and his assistant Bonnie Nettles had this to say. They were from an evolutionary level above human, the kingdom of heaven, incarnated in two human bodies. Applewhite came out with a statement in 1995 that was brought out on the internet, and he referred to himself as a messenger from God, just like Jesus. That just sends cold chills up my back. You know, there's a lot of people out there wanting to take advantage of us. God says to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 45 and 22, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Another cult leader, another self-proclaimed Christ was Luke Jure of the Solar Temple in France. He told hundreds of his believers that if they would uh, set themselves on fire and, and kill themselves, that they would be taken off to a planet called Cirrus, where they would begin to live a, in a higher evolutionary stage of development. Revelation 17, verse 3, John says, These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. Now, you don't know who the beast is yet, but in a few weeks, we're going to cover the beast and the mark of the beast. And the Bible is going to tell you exactly who the beast is and what the mark is. Amen? Amen. Amen? The Bible always explains itself. But for right now, we want to know that these are of one mind, these cults and these cult leaders, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. This guy, Jose de Jesus, was on 2020 on ABC. Uh, English translation of his name is Joe Jesus. Now, they caught up with Joe Jesus, 2020 did, in a bar in Houston. And he was sitting in the bar, and he was swilling scotch and smoking cigarettes, and he had uh, on his, the, uh, the, his white dress shirt, he had embroidered 666. He told his followers that if they would give up all of their worldly possessions, everything that they had, and follow him, that they would have eternal life. Now, that sounds strange to those of us that believe in God, amen? But there are thousands and thousands of believers in Joe Jesus in this country and especially the South American countries. He makes millions of dollars being a self-proclaimed Christ. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24 and verse 24, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders. John Milner, Miller, 
of Australia claims to be the Messiah. And his wife claims to be the Virgin Mary. This came out in May 18 of 2011. Jesus again says in Matthew 24 and verse 24, these were to, to deceive, if possible, the very elect. You've heard me say this every time we've come together. The only way that we can protect ourselves is to spend time in prayer daily and studying the Word of God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Pastor Johnny's not going to get you into heaven. Pastor Richie's not going to get you into heaven or your husband or your wife or, or anybody else. Your relationship depends solely on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's impossible to have a relationship with Jesus unless we're praying and studying the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And we need to get into that practice. I can't imagine getting up in the morning and not hitting my knees first. Amen. And then spending a little time in Scripture. I don't care if you may have the worst day on the planet, but if, if you start your day that way with Jesus in prayer and Bible study, it makes your day go a lot better. I promise you. Amen? Amen. So we need to put our faith and trust in God and His Word. Anytime we transfer our loyalty to a religious leader or exalt that leader to the place of God, we are on very, very dangerous ground. Now, there's nothing wrong with ex uh, respecting our religious leaders as long as they're going along with Scripture. Amen? Amen? But we shouldn't put our trust in them. We should put our trust in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless there come what? A falling, a falling away first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We're going to spend a whole hour on this verse right here because there is a time coming when there's going to be someone that claims to be God, a human being. And, and, and Paul was warning us about that a couple of thousand years ago. So we need to be ready for that day. John says in 1 John 2 and verse 18, Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that we are in the last hour. Listen to me now. When you see Antichrist plural in the, in the Word of God, if you look at that importance, that can be any of us that are not with Jesus. If we're doing something to undermine God and His church, we're playing the role of an antichrist, aren't we? Yep. Isn't that right? If you see it singularly in your Bible, it's referring to Satan. Okay? So, John tells us, even now, many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. There is absolutely no substitute for Jesus Christ. Not one. 1 John 4 and verse 3 goes on to say, Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. People are looking for the Antichrist to come. John says he's already here. John says he's already here. Acts 4 and verse 12 goes on to tell us, nor is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Our only way to get to heaven is we're saved by grace through faith in the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. That's the only way we can get to heaven. I can preach sermons till, till the Lord comes, and if my heart's not right with Jesus, I'm not going to be in heaven. That's the bottom line. I have to have that right relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the one that died for us and takes away the sins of the world. Number two, cult leaders' words. What he says is absolute truth, overshadowing the Bible. Marshall Applewhite even invented his own theology. He made up his own world. He called our bodies vehicles. He called our souls deposits. He said that he and his assistant, Bonnie uh, Nettles, Metamorphosis from an evolutionary level, from one evolutionary level to another. And that's what the Heaven's Gate cult came to believe. They believed that if they committed suicide, they were going to evolve to the next spiritual level. Total, total falsity, not going along with the Bible. Ho Ming Chen, 
was another cult leader in Darwin, Texas. Now, I have to cut, check myself on this because my Vietnam experience, I, mean, I want to say Ho, Ho, Ho Chi Minh. But anyway, Ho Ming Chen was another, another uh, cult leader, and he told 140 of his followers in Texas that God was going to reincarnate his body in March of 31 of 1998. And he said that God was going to usher in his reincarnation with the planets falling out of the sky. Well, when that didn't happen, Ho Ming Chin did something that most cult leaders would never do. He put out a statement. He said, I would rather you don't believe what I say anymore. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good counsel? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In the last days, John refers in the book of Revelation to Babylon. And as, as we're going to see as we study, Babylon in the book of Revelation, because Daniel and Revelation are bathed in symbolism, Babylon in the book of Revelation is code for apostate religion in the last days. For apostate religion in the last days. Speaking of false religious practices in the last days, uh, John says in Revelation 18 verse 23, by your sorceries all nations were deceived. The devil wants to deceive us. He doesn't care how he does it. That's why we've got to pray and study the Word of God and be alert because the devil's going to try to take us out any way he can. John said he performs some great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Jesus warned, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That's where we can be protected. That's our insurance policy. Marshall Applewhite taught that the Hellbop Comet was going to usher in this, the end of this age and a brand new one would come forth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Amen? Or make you free. That's our insurance policy. Holding on to the word of God. You see, if any religious leader changes the gospel, beware. If any religious leader distorts biblical principles, beware. If any religious leader makes up his own rules or their own rules, beware. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. Leaning on God's word. Number three, cults manipulate. They coerce members into submission. Uh, the Christian Science Monitor put out an article not too long ago about social clubs on, on university campuses. <laughs> and the article that they wrote said that some of these social clubs were actually cults in disguise. In fact, even the Heaven's Gate cult still operates on some college campuses under different names today. So we need to be uh, protecting ourselves with God's Word. I have a friend of mine, Sandy. She writes kids' books. And she, was, she has this terrible phobia of anybody that wears a mask and a costume. And she was up in New York uh, one weekend giving, doing a book tour. And she came out on the stage and was getting ready to give a, a lecture about her book. And all of a sudden, from both sides of the stage, two young men jumped out from the back of the stage and they had on chipmunk costumes. And she began to scream and her knees began to knock. She was just something about her not knowing what was behind the mask that absolutely terrified my friend. Brothers and sisters, the devil has many masks. Amen. We need to understand that. The devil has many masks. And the Bible tells us that he's fixing to fool a whole lot of people. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 4. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into what? An angel. an angel of light. You see, that's why it's so important. You, we spent a whole hour on the subject of the rapture last Saturday morning. You know, just picture this. We know that when we studied a week or so ago about the battle in heaven, one third of angels fell from heaven, right? Mm -hmm. We read that in the book of Revelation. Just picture this. I don't know how many one third is because the Bible doesn't tell us. But I know that Daniel tried to, to count them, and it was a thousand times ten thousands of thousands of angels, right? Now, the devil himself is going to transform himself into an angel of light. 
If we don't know how Jesus Christ is coming back in the last days, he's going to fool a lot of people, isn't he? Because he's going to impersonate Christ. That's what this is referring to right here. And so we need to know exactly how Christ is coming back because we don't want to be fooled. Amen? Amen. So we need to be studying our Bibles. You know, in the last days when uh, the mark of the beast is, uh, is imposed and the Bible tells us that, that people are going to be forced to follow this beast power, uh, Revelation 13 verse 16 says he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. That's why it's important for us to understand about the mark of the beast and what it means because we need to be sure that we have God's sign to cover us. Amen? Amen. Revelation's conflict is between good and evil. And as we have been seeing, that conflict started all the way back in heaven between God and Satan and that, with that war. And the devil has been trying to destroy us ever since because he wants to take as many of us out of him as he can. The devil wants total and complete mind control over us. Total and complete mind control. Revelation 13 and verse 17, it says, And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast. God wants us to lovingly follow him. Love always leads to obedience. But God never forces. Love doesn't force, does it? The Antichrist figure uh, is the ultimate cult leader. We're going to talk more about that in future lectures. It's the ultimate attempt to mind control. You know, Jesus and his disciples were wanting to go through a village in Samaria. And Samaritans refused to let Jesus and the disciples pass through this village. And so we had a couple of disciples that were with Jesus that day. And they thought that they were going to do God a great service. And... They went to Jesus and said, do you want us to call fire down upon them and destroy them? Can you imagine uh, these two men thinking that they could, they could do something for God to overpower this, this village? But how did God deal with this conflict? Look at what Jesus had to say. Jesus said to those disciples, the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Amen. You know, I, I would propose to you that the hardest thing to do is be lost. Think about that. God did everything he could to save us when he died for us on the cross of Calvary. And all he requires of us is to us to surrender our hearts to him. Amen? Amen? Isn't that wonderful? What a Savior that we serve. Number four, cults regularly appeal to miracles as a sign of divine credentials. You know, the devil does miracles too, doesn't he? Remember back in Egypt when, when uh, Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron were sent to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go? Moses threw his rod down on the ground and snakes appeared, right? Pharaoh looked at Moses and Aaron and said, not so, not so fast, men. That's nothing. He called his magicians over. What did they do? They did the same miracle. So the devil can do miracles too. So we need to be sure we know what we're standing for. John warns us in Revelation 13, verse 13. He performed, talking about this Antichrist, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven and on earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lives. God does not ever force us to follow him. That was one of the hardest things for me as a, a, a preacher to, to, to grasp in my own mind. Why I couldn't hook a logging chain to everybody's ankles and drag them into the kingdom. But God doesn't work that way. Love doesn't work that way, does it? No. God gives us freedom of choice. Uh, one of these days, people are going to be confused because the devil is going to deceive those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in front of the beast. Millions are going to fall for this Antichrist because they haven't been praying and studying the Bible for themselves. Why do people uh, accept counterfeits? Because they don't know how to distinguish between truth and error. How do you know how to distinguish between truth and error? Do you go ask Pastor Johnny or your pastor? That's a good maybe good, and it's okay, 
But really, the way that we can have assurance is to pray and ask Jesus for the truth. Amen? Amen. And follow His word from Scripture. Isn't that right? Amen. Isaiah 45 and 22, Jesus said, Look to me and be saved, all you is of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. Number five, cults want to isolate converts from their families. They want to get their uh, cult members away from everybody that they ever knew. Jimmy Jones was a self-proclaimed Messiah of the People's Temple in, in, in California. And he talked almost a thousand people. Now listen to this. He talked almost a thousand people to go off to a hot, steamy jungle in Guyana and drink cyanide-laced Kool-Aid and kill themselves. A thousand people. Boy, I, I don't know what I'd do if we tried to get a thousand people in this empty sanctuary tonight. But this guy had big success, didn't he? A thousand people. Cult leaders want to be our one source for information. Cult leaders want us to forget our family and our friends. Don't have anything to do with our, our family and friends. Everyone is out to get them. There's a high sense of paranoia in the cult. They don't want anybody to know anybody else. Uh, everyone is uh, full of error. Everyone is out to get them. Cult leaders want total and complete control of our minds, our bodies, our finances, everything. Revelation 16 and verse 14 again. John warns us, they are the spirits of what? Demons. Performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth. To the kings of the earth. And they're going to be fooling people in the last days and of the whole world to gather them to that battle of that great day of God Almighty. You know, one day, just before Jesus comes, the Bible tells us that the devil's going to gather all the forces of evil together that he can. He's going to make one more last assault on God's people. Amen? He wants to take us out any way he can. So he's going to convince all of these wicked people that have lived to go out and attack God's people and try to destroy them. Well, the devil is going to have an end. God is going to destroy that, that devil and the evil ones that are with him. They're the spirits of demons, John says. They're ready to destroy the world. And we need to protect ourselves from cultish leaders. God is a God of relationships. He wants to enhance relationships. The devil wants to destroy relationships. Not only with God, but he wants us to destroy relationships with each other. That's the way the devil's built. Uh, when that Heaven's Gate cult was discovered, once again, like I said, they weren't even sure. That they didn't even know that they had 21 women in that group. Proverbs 16, verse 25 tells us there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Sincerity is not enough. Sincerity is not enough. You can sincerely follow error and be lost. Isn't that true? You can sincerely follow error and be lost. Cult leaders want us to talk like them. Cult leaders want us to walk like them. God is a God of diversity. You know, there's over 10,000 different species of birds. There's over 2 million different insects, each one of them different from the other. Now, if God wanted to just be a boring God and not put much effort into creation, He could have just taken a cookie cutter and stamped out 2 million insects, all looking the same, all having the same color. He could have taken a cookie cutter and, 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 and cut out another 10,000 bird species, okay? But you know what? God is a God of variety. Diversity complements God. The Bible says that God, the God had looked at them, each other and said, let us make man in our image. It takes all of us. All of us. Different personalities. Different ways of talking. Different ways of walking. Different ways of, uh, 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 of, of communicating. It takes all of us to make up the image of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. God is a God of diversity. Cult leaders want to make us cookie cutters. Cult leaders want us to talk like them, walk like them, dress like them. Uh, God doesn't want a bunch of robots. And when someone tries to put you in that box, it's trying to bust out of the factory. Amen? Diversity complements God. 
1 John 4 and verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but do what? Yes. Test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now listen to me. I really embrace this testing of the spirits. Amen? Because we're not going to know whether we're standing on truth unless we put it to the litmus test. This book right here. Amen. And I, every time we've come together, I've said, study it for yourself. I want to make sure that you, you're keeping me on my toes. I give you out scriptural outlines every night to go check what I've said with this book right here. Uh, if, if, if that's not enough, we have the Bible school that goes along with what I'm speaking on each time we come together. Take your own Bible. Don't even trust the Bible that we're going to give you for free back there if you don't want to. Take your own Bible. Go home and pray first and study these things out for yourself so that you'll know the truth for yourself. Because there's many false prophets out there that have gone out into the world. For everything beautiful, everything pure, everything lovely, everything true that God has, the devil has a counterfeit. Amen. Everything. And the only way we know the truth from the counterfeit, I keep saying it, and I'm going to get hoarse tonight saying it, but we've got to pray and study for ourselves. Testing the spirits. Romans 14, verse 12. Paul says, so then each of us shall give what? Account, Account of himself to God. God wants to take you by the arm. He wants to take you by the hand. He wants to guide you into eternal kingdom with Him. Amen? And He does that through His Word. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you look to any human authority rather than Christ. Amen? You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you accept the teachings of tradition rather than the Word of God. Now, there are a lot of good traditions in Christianity. Baptism by immersion. That's a wonderful tradition. Amen? Amen? Many good traditions in Christianity. But I don't care what walk of faith you come from, make sure that you've studied everything that you has become part of the fabric of your belief system and that you can back it up with Scripture. Amen. Because tradition can be good in the church, but it can also be deadly. Because there are some traditions in some places that don't have a biblical leg to stand on. Amen? Amen? So just study it out. Know it for yourself. Make sure that what you believe goes along with Scripture. Amen. And, and I don't mean just taking one verse or two verses and making a doctrine. The Bible says we need to be studying line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. That's why we have that concordance. If you want to know what the Bible says about hell, you go to that concordance, you look up the word hell, and there'll be hundreds, a couple hundred verses, okay, that have the word hell in it. You pray about it, you study all those verses, and guess what? God is going to give you the truth that you need to know about that doctrine. Amen? Amen. If you want to study, if you want to know about heaven, go look up the word heaven. Every scripture is going to be there. Study line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, because we need to be sure that we're standing on God's Word and not man's Word. Amen? You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you're awed by spectacular miracles. The devil does miracles too. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you fail to live by your own personal convictions. Everybody has the privilege of the Holy Spirit coming to them. Amen. And you, the, the, the most beautiful way that I can tell you of that experience, even when we were little kids, when you were tempted maybe to take an extra piece of chocolate or something like that, there was a little voice in there that said, uh-uh-uh, Johnny, don't you do it. You've had that experience, haven't you, sister? Don't you do it. There's that voice inside of you that keeps us on, on, on track. Amen? Amen? We are born with that spiritual compass that comes from God. That Holy Spirit gives us the power to follow Jesus. And we verify our beliefs through Holy Scriptures. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you fail to live by your own personal convictions. No, when you come to the end of time, we talked about judgment last Saturday night, the hour of judgment. 
When you come to that great judgment, nobody, God is not going to ask anybody on this planet, did you do what Pastor Johnny told you to do or any other human being? Amen? Amen. God is going to say, if, did you love me enough to obey me? If you love me, keep my commandments. Did you do what I asked you to do? That's the only thing that we want to embrace. Jesus Christ is coming soon to take us home in the clouds of glory. And He wants us to lovingly obey Him. That's not legalism, is it? No. Loving obedience is not legalism. I, I will give the same respect to my own parents. Because I love them. Not I'm not afraid because they might give me, give me a spanking when I was a kid. I, I obey them, learned to obey them because I love them. And God wants us to have that same relationship with Him. Today we need to know who we are following and why. Are you looking for a place to belong? You can find it in God's Word. Are you looking for a sense of purpose in life? Again, you can find it in God's Word. Are you looking for a, a sense of purpose in general? Again, you can find it in God's Word. You have it through Jesus Christ. Every precious page of the Bible is about Jesus. Trust Him enough to show you what to do next. Amen? Amen. Trust Jesus enough. I love this song, Open my eyes that I may see visions of truth you have for me. Place in my hands that glorious key that will unlock and set me free. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth so strong and clear. And while those words fall, and while the words fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, come set me free. The most beautiful invitation in the Bible I, I, I find in the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 17. The Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. And the bride, the bride is his church. Say, come. Let him who hears, say, come. Let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Are you hungry? After righteousness, come to Jesus. Are you thirsting after truth? Give your heart to Jesus. He is there tonight with His arms wide open, willing to accept us no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. What a loving Savior we have. Mm -hmm. That He can take a sinner such as me and you and make us heaven bound material. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Will you make your stand for Him again tonight? You know, Paul wants us to stand for Jesus every day. Will you just stand with me tonight and declare your allegiance to Christ as I pray? Let us pray. Great God and Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this message tonight about cults. Lord, we want to be ready for your glorious appearing. We know that the devil is trying to just do anything he can do to confuse us and disturb us and keep us away from you. We know that you're a God of love that you're not the tyrant that he makes you out to be. That, that the question that many people ask is, if God is so good, why do so many bad things happen to good people? That's not you doing that, God. That's Satan doing it. And Lord, we know that you are good, and that you want us in the kingdom of heaven. And tonight, as we're standing here together, we're recommitting our lives to you. I ask that you would bless each family that's represented by those of us standing here tonight. Keep us safe and bring us back safely again. Tomorrow evening is my prayer, and we thank you for hearing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our theme song, shall we? I am decided to follow Jesus. I am decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning Behind me.
much lawlessness in the world today? Tomorrow night, God is going to answer that question for us. You won't want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7. Thank you and God bless. <coughs>